Strategic mentors help businesses to grow. At Business in Oxford 2017, we'll hear about some of the strategies which Chris uses at the heart of his business. Chris, thanks very much for joining us this afternoon for B4TV and also for agreeing to speak at Business in Oxford in May. Perhaps you could give our viewers a bit of background about what you did before Strategic Mentors. Sure, yeah, well, originally uh, I qualified as a, a chartered accountant, um, did the whole kind of professional route, was in, was in a firm, became a manager in the firm, had a, a series, a portfolio of clients in all sorts of different sectors and industries. Um, and, and then I, I had what I describe as my midlife crisis in my mid-twenties, where I was giving, um, from the firm, I was giving advice to, to companies, but I was, I was advising people who had businesses from like half a million of sales to 30 million of sales, um, advice on how to make their business go better. Now, it was good advice because I was being spoon-fed by a big national company, a firm, professional firm, but uh, I hadn't done it. And I just started to feel um, a lack of integrity from doing that. So from there I went into the corporate world and had and, and worked around a whole range of sectors actually within within initially within finance but then broadening out into marketing and sales and logistics and, and supply chain and all sorts. And then business turnaround in the end. And that so that was the that was the essentially the work uh, I did as a as, as corporate. But then I went um, independent and set up um, a personal consultancy as a, a consultancy as a, as a freelance finance director. Um, which was great. It was a really nice lifestyle, very lucrative, working with some fantastic people and, and a range of, um, of, again, different industries and sectors. So really stimulating. Um, and, uh, and then I built that into something that was just really, really comfortable. But that led into um, uh, a, a situation where a, a real kind of impactful personal situation where my wife was diagnosed with having um, an incurable brain tumour. And so suddenly all the stuff that you do with work uh, pales into insignificance as to what really, really matters. And I realised, A, what the work had come second for me. It was, uh, it, uh, having the, you know, the, a really great relationship was much more important. But secondly, I realised that having a business like that isn't really having a business. It's having a job um, where, yeah, you're, you're the boss, you're your own boss, but if you don't work, then the income obviously dries up. And, and I chose at that point, because I'd built it, it, was, it had been really lucrative, when my wife needed a lot of personal care and, and to essentially 24-hour 24 24 hour care by the end, um, uh, I, it was, had to be me. I didn't want that to happen for anybody else to be doing that. Uh, and so it was really, really special. It was a beautiful time. Um, a rubbish situation. You wouldn't want any. You'd want to go through it, but it was also beautiful. Um, and then after she died, and I, you know, life goes on, and you you build something back up. I thought, well, I don't want to do that again. I build up this business, this business that's really a job. Let's do something really different, and not different, but just do it in a smarter way. And so then I, I you know, we'd be talking to a number of uh, different businesses, and it's you know what it's like when. When you're running a business and someone finds out you've got your own business and they ask, they're going to ask you the question, how's business? How's it going? And we always answer it in the same way. We always say, it's going great. We're really busy. And it just struck me, since when was busy the purpose? Since when, was, when did that matter? And we've, we've, we've learned to use busyness as like a badge of honour, as like a, a proxy for success. And having been through personally what I went through, it just woke me up. It was like a realization, that's not what really matters. It's not about being busy. And so I'd suggest that actually, if you've got a business, the reason we all have a business is for the same thing, the same reason. And actually, the same three reasons, which is, uh, I call them the three Fs. It's, it, the first reason is freedom. You have a business for freedom, otherwise you'd get a job. You want it for fulfillment, because that, gives meaning to the work you do. And you want financial success to pay for all the things that life can bring you when you've got freedom. So if that's why we do what we do with businesses, the three Fs of freedom, fulfillment, and financial success, why is it that we end up focused on being busy and there must be a smarter way? And 
as well as um, discovering the three F's and, and talking about a bit more about that at the event, I understand you've also found some personal satisfaction in, in, in getting involved in a, a charity um, in, Uganda. in Uganda. Indeed, the, the, um, yeah, I talk about the three F's of freedom, fulfillment and financial success, and, and, but the middle one there, fulfillment, is it's so easily overlooked. People would spend so much time almost defining themselves by how busy they are and what they're doing in, in their work and through their business. But actually, in the end, uh, if true fulfillment, which to some level we all really hanker for, we all really want, one of the ways of finding that and getting that is to realise how much you can give back and make a contribution and make a difference to other people. Um, and doing that, you can find real fulfillment. So there's a, uh, there's a whole backstory, a whole reason of how, how uh, I and my partner got into this, but we set up a, a, a charity which is specifically to fund the education of um, girls, again, specifically girls, in Uganda. Um, and the, the why we do that is that um, in Uganda, education is not free. It's not expensive in our terms, but it's not free. And um, the, the usual family setup and the economics means that the, often families who've gone through generational cycles of poverty can't afford to send the kids to school. So they don't go to school and that cycle of poverty continues. And actually, if you can intervene, if you can provide the funding to allow, especially girls, to go to school, then magic happens. You get, um, they're able, that, um, what happens is they, they, they complete their education, then the, the more able ones are able to get qualifications and become things like teachers and nurses. It's jobs that stay in the community. And so the whole community grows. This is why we're focusing on girls and women, because that's how society will, will evolve and, and, and get stronger and better. But in, in also in doing that, the women become um, more self-sustaining and therefore they get married later. They have fewer children later. Those children have better life chances. So everything improves and we can break that cycle of poverty in a single generation. And it's just a wonderful thing to be able to do. So it's, we just do it partly because we, we love doing it and we love the impact that it has. But it's, I also want to talk about it because anyone can do something. You can have your own version of that and making a contribution and making a difference. Um, and when you can do that, then you get one of the three F's, which is fulfillment. Chris, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you and find Thank out you your story. And I'm sure uh, I speak on behalf of the delegates at the event. We'll look forward to hearing more. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.